what's up you guys my name is Aubrey and this is my channel so it is currently about 4 15 central time which means it's 5 15 eastern time and President Joe Biden just got done announcing the Americans jobs plan now this is the first of two parts to this four trillion dollar infrastructure bill that he and his administration are proposing and are trying to get passed into law now in this video I'm gonna be breaking down President Joe Biden's speech I'm gonna be breaking down what we currently know and what you need to know about the Americans jobs plan. I'm going to be talking about who it will benefit, what it will benefit, and more importantly, how it's going to be paid for. So let's get started. Now, I would like to preface that as of right now, we don't know a whole lot of the nitty gritty details. Like I said, President Joe Biden just finished his speech a few moments ago. There is no like physical bill that has been released. So there's no real literature that you can read. You kind of just have to go off of what President Joe Biden said. With that being said, I watched the speech, I took notes, I've also been paying attention to what has been happening in the news lately, so I have a pretty decent idea of what is going on and what we can expect, even though I don't know the exact numbers. So like I said, this is part one of two of a very significant infrastructure bill. In fact, President Joe Biden stated himself in the speech, that this will be the largest infrastructure investment that the United States has made since World War II. The part of the infrastructure bill that President Joe Biden announced today is the American Jobs Plan. In the next couple of weeks, he will be releasing part two of this plan, which is the American Family Plan. Each of these two parts are valued at $2 trillion each, combining to be a total of $4 trillion. Now, one thing that is very important to note is the fact that this is not a stimulus package. This is a spending bill. What we've seen over the last year between the CARES Act, the American Rescue Plan, which was the most recent bill we saw, as well as that $600 billion one that was passed around the holidays, all three of these are stimulus packages. They are packages and they are bills that were created as a way to help keep America afloat as a response to COVID-19 and to the pandemic. But this most recent bill that was just announced, the American Jobs Plan and the American Family Plan, these two plans are not stimulus packages. They are spending bills that are meant to help invest in the future of America. So that is a very big differentiator. That is an important thing to keep in mind. One big emphasis that President Joe Biden made throughout his speech is the idea of rebuilding America, that it's time to rebuild America and it's time to reinvest into American infrastructure and American families. Now, this first part, the Americans Jobs Plan, is an infrastructure-based plan. This is a plan that is going to be focused on things like investing into our railroad system, into our jobs, into our infrastructure, into our waterways, into our highways, into electric vehicles, into just our overall infrastructure as a country. That is what this plan is, the American Jobs Plan. The second part of this plan, the American Family Plan, is more of social infrastructure. So resources for families, for students, for the elderly, and things like that. Now the reason why these two bills that seemingly have nothing to do with each other are combined into one massive infrastructure bill is without a doubt because it allows for Democrats to insert some of their social policies into an infrastructure bill that will garner some Republican support. If the Democrats were to come forward with a very social Socially focused bill, something with like universal pre-K, resources for the elderly, free community college, this type of bill would get a lot of pushback from Republicans. So the strategy that Democrats are using is to clump it into a bill that has traditionally garnered a lot of Republican support, which is traditional infrastructure. This is why these two bills are being combined. The American Family Plan, which is the social infrastructure, combined with the American Jobs Plan, which is the traditional infrastructure, and that is why they are being combined in this manner. It is definitely a negotiating tactic. With that being said, this American Jobs Plan has some major focuses. Number one is to create more jobs in the U.S. Number two is to improve and modernize the transportation system in the U.S. And number three is to implement more clean energy efforts into the U.S. as well. President Joe Biden stated a few talking points about this plan. Number one is modernizing 20,000 miles of road and highways. Number two is replacing economically significant bridges. So in his 
his speech, President Joe Biden stated that there are a number of economically important bridges across the United States, but there are 10 of them that need to be replaced. And in this bill, we would look at getting those bridges replaced. These are economically significant bridges. So not only would this help like the transportation aspect of our economy, but it would also help create jobs as well because people need to build those bridges. In addition to just replacing 10 bridges, we would also look at repairing 10,000 bridges that need upgrades. And we would also look at developing and modernizing our railway system. President Joe Biden really emphasized the importance of cutting pollution, of cutting bottlenecks in our ports, in our airports, in our railways, as well as just making everything more efficient and more clean. In addition to traditional transportation like railways, bridges, and roads, there is also a lot of effort outlined in this bill to make transportation cleaner he had outlined that there is a plan in this plan to implement 500,000 charging stations and a full nationwide charging station network. In addition to charging stations, there's also going to be significant tax incentives for clean energy vehicles and all federal government vehicles will be transitioning to clean energy vehicles as well. So electric and hydrogen vehicles. Not only is there a physical investment to like actual clean energy vehicles and clean energy efforts, but there's also going to be money allocated to combating climate change and the physical impact that climate change has. For example, superstorms is what President Biden cited in his speech. So figuring out ways to build up our infrastructure so that superstorms and the climate impact of climate change don't have quite as significant of an impact as they have in the last couple of years. For example, a perfect example of this would be Texas and the recent storms that we had here due to extreme cold weather. So there would be money allocated to building up our infrastructure to combat natural disasters, things like floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, and more. In addition to the major talking points, things like traditional infrastructure and clean energy, there is a lot of other plans in there as well that aren't quite as all encompassing. President Joe Biden cited an effort to replace 100% of the lead pipes throughout the United States, giving accessible fast internet to all Americans. He cited that 35% of rural communities do not have access to reliable internet. And he also outlined a vague plan of providing healthcare and services services and resources to the elderly to assist what is called the sandwich generations. So the people that are not only having to take care of their kids and their children, but are also having to take care of their elderly parents as well. So he had outlined that there are plans to assist that generation and to provide resources for disabled people, for elderly people, and for people that need that assistance. There were a bit more points that he talked about in his speech, but I'm not going to talk about them here because they're just very minimal and he didn't really outline a whole lot of details. But in summary, all of these plans plans and more are going to total out to be $2 trillion. Again, this is just for the Americans jobs portion of the plan, not the American family. And this spending will take place across an eight year period of time. But now begs the question that so many people ask whenever we talk about large spending bills, how are we going to pay for it? And President Joe Biden did outline a plan for that as well. He stated in his speech that no one making under $400,000 per year will see a tax increase, that all of the tax increases will take place for people making above that amount, as well as corporations. In addition to this promise that he's made continuously, not only throughout his presidency, but also throughout his campaign as well, he did state some tax increases that would be taking place. The corporate tax rate will be increased to 28%, which he stated that this is actually still lower than it was up until 2017. So it is going to be raised, but not as high as we've seen it in the past. So 28% would be the new tax rate for that. In addition to a corporate tax rate, there will be a global minimum tax for U.S. corporations totaling 21%. There will be tax penalties on companies that take their business offshore. So for companies that hire offshore, that get resources offshore, basically the government is just trying to really incentivize companies to buy American and hire American. And the companies that choose not to do that will be penalized for that. In addition, there will be an increase in IRS enforcement to corporations that either fail to report or they under report their revenue every year, which would then result in them paying lower tax bill than they need to. But with that being said, you guys, this kind of covers the cliff notes of what President Joe Biden had to say, and it kind of covers the cliff notes of what we know of the American Jobs Plan as of today. Now keep in mind that this video isn't as well thought out or as well organized as some of my other videos, and that's because this speech 
literally just ended about 15 minutes ago as I'm recording this video. So I will be doing a deeper dive later this week, kind of laying out my thoughts in a more well-organized way, doing some more research on what he had to say from the speech, and then doing a video on that. This is really just the cliff notes of his speech and some of the talking points that you need to remember and that you need to know about this bill. Now, one last thing to keep in mind is the fact that remember these social issues that we've been talking about, things like free community college, universal pre-K, paid family leave, the potential of reoccurring stimulus, checks. This is a portion of the bill that has not been announced yet. So that's why I did not discuss it in this video. But with that being said, you guys, if you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, make sure to leave a comment down below. I would love to hear your thoughts on President Joe Biden's speech. I would love to hear your thoughts on the American Jobs Plan. I would love to hear your thoughts on just this entire plan as a whole. I mean, $4 trillion is a lot of money, and I would love to hear your thoughts. But like always, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that notification bell, and I will see you guys in the next video.